over your drinking water, opening old wounds at 11. This is Dateline NBC. Tonight. This man killed four people. He was found insane. I remember putting the gun to her and shooting her in the head. Taxpayers pay for almost all of his needs at this sprawling medical facility. But then they pay again. He gets a disability check each month. He is living better, living higher, and wealthier than he ever would have before. Does that seem fair to you? <laughs> believe me, I'd have sex with you. <laughs> I believe me, you wouldn't know what hit so you. Honest. Your head would fall off your Let neck. He's the most popular voice on morning radio. I can't even talk to you. You're so stupid. But he's been fined over a million dollars for indecent speech. You know how I feel about your body. Is anything off limits to him? I think some of the best guests are Klansmen, strippers, prostitutes. Tonight, love him or hate him, the Howard Stern you've never seen. Have you ever said anything on the radio that you have regretted saying? No, never. Someone was targeting the elderly. If you got into my bedroom, I'd, uh, I'd be, uh, I couldn't run anywhere. Assaults, murders, the mysterious fires to destroy the evidence. This is the bedroom area uh, where the body was found. But as police broke the case, Dateline was there. Tonight, an exclusive look inside the hunt for a serial killer. Did someone miss an early clue? She was a school custodian, but she had a dream. I could imagine just, just sitting there visualizing myself, this is my room, this is my desk, and children, today we're going to learn. After 17 years cleaning classrooms, could her dream come true? And the latest on gasoline ripoffs. Last summer, we told you Gary Lazar may be the worst gas station operator in the country. There were times that I saw samples taken out of their tanks where it looked, the gasoline looked like chocolate milk. And Gary Lazar denied he was Gary Lazar. I'm not Mr. Lazar. You're not. We'll tell you what's become of him. Plus, dress rehearsal, Dateline's Picture of the Week. Dateline with anchors Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips. With Brian Ross, Deborah Roberts, John Scott, Lee Thompson, Faith Daniels, and David Bloom. Dateline continues after this brief message. Hunger in the United States is at a record level. The best estimates are that there's 30 million people that are hungry in this country. There are many, many infants and young children who suffer from malnutrition. There's just no excuse for that. Beautiful house plants. Tonight on News 4 New York at 11, the New York Water Wars. Find out how these reservoirs could become contaminated if the city doesn't take action now. A News 4 exclusive report tonight at 11. Plus, what birth control do you use? You may be surprised at the popular choice for protection. And tonight, Dateline goes behind the scenes with the self-proclaimed king of all media, Howard Stern. Howard still deciding whether to react live tonight on News 4 New York at 11. From our studios in New York, here are Stone Phillips and Jane Pauley. Good evening. Crime doesn't pay. Well, it's not supposed to anyway, but tonight we'll show you how the law of unintended consequences is putting millions of your tax dollars in the hands of admitted killers. It all has to do with Social Security for the disabled. Now, the idea is that if you lose your job because of physical or mental impairment, you can qualify for disability income. But who would ever guess that you could qualify because you are criminally insane to the point of having killed someone? As Lee Thompson reports, in some cases, killers are getting more in benefits than the families of their victims. Sheriff's We've got a guy at Edwards Moped Shop shooting out the front door. Cars going down the road. I believe he shot the driver at his it was here five years ago on a hot July night when Michael Hayes says that he listened to his demons and opened fire in one of North Carolina's deadliest shooting sprees. Subject is firing the shots out the door. I had her roll a window down and turn her interior light on. Uh, 
to look into her eyes and smell, see if I smelt this stench to see if she really was, you know, a demon. I just had another weapon shot in too. He was standing in the road in nothing but his skivvies and his underwear, and he'd have the weapon behind his leg. He'd tell motorists to stop, and then he would pull the weapon out and just start firing. When Hayes' rampage was over, nine people had been shot, four of them killed. I sure didn't mean to do that. I mean, I was just so psychotic and out of it, hearing the voices, smelling things. It just... And it scares me to think that it may happen again. Michael Hayes never took the stand during his trial, but survivors of his shooting spree did. Darlene Hull's husband was Hayes' last victim. I thought that he was gone. <laughs> And I reached over. <laughs> I put my arm on him. <laughs> and I told him I loved him. And goodbye. <laughs> if the crime devastated many North Carolinians, the verdict enraged them. We, the jury, find the defendant Michael Charles Hayes not guilty because you were satisfied that he was insane. Members of the jury, is this your verdict? So say you all. Yes. yes. If Michael Hayes had been found guilty of first-degree murder, he could have been imprisoned for life or even executed. But the verdict, not guilty by reason of insanity, brought Hayes here to the Dorothea Dick State Mental Hospital in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hayes had been allowed considerable freedom in the past on this 300-acre campus, and people in North Carolina are outraged about the lifestyle he's been able to lead. There are no gates to fence him in at this hospital, and he has all the amenities. Tennis courts, baseball fields, a fitness course, gazebos, picnic tables, basketball, a hiking trail. Some of his victims say Michael Hayes lives better than they do. But a greater outrage, they say, is he not only lives here at taxpayers' expense provided for by the state, but he also gets a check each month from Uncle Sam. We found out he was getting $511 a month Social Security, for which he would purchase televisions, VCRs, uh, cellular phones, walkie-talkies. Forsyth County uh, District Attorney Tom Keith, who is working hard to make sure Hayes does not get out of the hospital, says it's just unfair a killer is getting all that government money. The state is paying for his room and board. He doesn't need to double dip double dipping because he benefits twice. First, because taxpayers pay for almost anything he needs at the hospital. And then taxpayers pay again by sending him a monthly social security check. Michael Hayes could never have even applied for benefits if he had not been declared insane as a result of his crimes. Doris and Nick Nicholson, whose son Tom was one of Hayes' victims, say it is the final indignity. He actually qualified for Social Security disability by murdering four people. Authorities say since he has been in the hospital double dipping, Hayes has gone on many shopping sprees, buying, among other things, three leather coats, 11 pairs of jeans, nine dress pants, 20 dress shirts, 300 CDs, a microwave oven to heat pizza he frequently had delivered, and even a motorcycle. It really looked like he was running a Walmart down there. Nick Nicholson was so incensed, he filed a lawsuit, and a judge ordered an auction of Hayes' belongings. Many things were sold, but the law says Social Security benefits cannot be touched. So Michael Hayes continues to get more than $500 a month, every month, out of the taxpayer's pocket. Hayes' attorney, Carl Knutson, says his client has a right to the money. He should be treated the same as other patients in the hospital. If he had been convicted of, his, of a crime, then the law would have already provided that those benefits would be terminated. But he was found not guilty. There are many in the state of North Carolina who feel that it is very unfair that he shot four people and yet has been able to maintain a lifestyle like he does over at Dorothea Dix. Well, I think that his lifestyle, as you put it, is vastly overrated. I don't think either you or I or anyone else would trade places with him. Um, he has no freedom. But then again, he did kill four people. But then again, he was found not guilty of any crime by a jury of people chosen from the community where the events occurred. 
Michael Hayes is just one of many who have killed and gone on to receive Social Security payments after their headline-grabbing crime. In New Jersey, Herbert Olson was sent to a state psychiatric hospital after trying to murder his parents with a kitchen knife. It was determined that he had a long uh, psychiatric history and that he was uh, schizophrenic and delusional uh, at the time that he attempted to kill his parents. Prosecutor Nicholas Bissell says Olson's disability benefits had piled up to more than $8,000. And according to authorities, he used that money and his monthly $600 benefit check to bribe a friend to help him escape. They cashed uh, one of the monthly Social Security checks, and then they cashed the uh, $8,000 check, and then went to New York City, got a hotel room, and spent the money on narcotics, and had a uh, essentially a five-day uh, binge until we were able to uh, uh, catch up with him. But the Arizona case of Curtis McDonald, some say, is the greatest irony of all. McDonald gunned down 22-year-old Laura Adcock as she was walking with her son through her apartment complex. He had complained that Laura's electrical appliances interfered with his radio reception. I just decided to shoot her and see if I could hurt her like she'd been hurting me for the, for the past few months. She was sabotaging my electronic equipment to where I couldn't even think straight. McDonald was found incompetent to stand trial and sent to a mental hospital. He now gets full room and board from the state and on top of that, more than $600 a month in Social Security benefits. Laura Adcock's two-year-old son also gets Social Security benefits because his mom is dead. But in a cruel contrast, he only gets $83 a month, just a fraction of what the man who killed his mother gets every month. If all of this seems like a strange twist of justice to you, this man agrees. You pass it along, you think that uh... Your job is done. Thirteen years ago, Congressman Andy Jacobs of Indiana learned that New York's son of Sam serial killer David Berkowitz was receiving more than $300 a month in disability aid. With that shocking information, he got Congress to pass a law barring convicts from collecting Social Security benefits. He says he also intended the law to include the criminally insane. But it didn't work out that way. Someone at Social Security interpreted our statute differently from the intent of the statute. When that law was first enacted, um, it perhaps wasn't carefully thought through it. Larry Thompson of the Social Security Administration says no matter what Jacobs intended, the 1980 legislation contained a loophole. The Congress enacts the statutes. The agency's job is to, is to implement the law the way the Congress writes the law. The law passed in 1980 and still on the books today says no monthly benefit shall be paid when there is the conviction of a felony. But those found not guilty by reason of insanity, like Michael Hayes, or incompetent to stand trial, like Curtis McDonnell, are not felons because they've never been convicted of anything. Thompson says that means Social Security cannot cut off their benefits. Well, I think this is something that, that uh, we, we feel that we ought to work with the Congress and see if we couldn't make, make some changes. But don't forget, 13 years have already gone by since that first bill was passed with that great big loophole. And during that time, the best estimates are the federal government has paid out tens of millions of dollars to the criminally insane in mental hospitals. It is an irony and it's also an outrage. We're trying to close the casino. Congressman Jacobs is chairman of the Social Security Subcommittee and is now trying to rewrite the law to close the loophole. But if Nick Nicholson's lawsuit hadn't made headlines, it seems possible that no one in Washington would have done anything about it. The public was understandably upset. Last month, Nick Nicholson went to Capitol Hill to tell his story, to try to make sure Social Security doesn't pay his son's killer another cent. It's the only fair thing to do. And, of course, save Social Security a whole lot of money, too. Yeah. We spoke with Congressman Jacobs today. He says the Social Security Administration followed the letter of the law. He's committed to the spirit of the law. He expects his new bill, which should close the loopholes, to become law by year's end. Next, a serial killer was raping and killing Florida elderly. This weekend, case solved. Dateline shows you how they did it. And later, Howard Stern, the king of morning radio.
I don't really care if uh, women find me offensive, and I don't care if men find me offensive. I don't even care. What are you proudest of about your son, Alex? I'm proudest of his sensitivity. He is a very sensitive person. His sensitivity? Yes. Take a look. See what you'll find. Sears has hardware of a much softer kind. We've got hose dryers to wear in a storm. Pop-up toasters to keep you all warm. Woo! Stunning flashlights to brighten the place. Electric pumps and plungers in lace. It's a prettier style. We're changing around here. Come see the softer side. Parents and teens, age-old rivals, especially when it comes to the car. Parents think one way, kids another. So Liberty Mutual created a safe driving video, because kids like videos. Why'd we do this? Because we love our kids, too. And our cars. So pick up the video at your local office. Liberty Mutual, facing the issues that face our customers. Don't forget to rewind. Well, we it seems Europeans have a passion for certain things, American. And one of them happens to be the reliable, efficient delivery of a certain American delivery company, UPS. Fact is, we've built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So next time you need something shipped there, use the outfit Europeans find, well, so fashionable. UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. Most of the Earth's surface is covered by water, which means most of the Earth is covered by princess. No cruise line sails more ships to more ports of call worldwide than princess, because it's more than a cruise. It's the love boat. The authorities called it suicide, but his mother suspects it was murder. Something terrible happened. But all new unsolved mystery. Then, Ted Turner and Jane Fonda, they're one of the world's most glamorous couples. So why are their Montana neighbors upset with them? Tom Brokaw has the answer, now. And he chooses victims by the color of their skin. You've got a serial killer. A tough case, a tougher opponent, an all new law and order. After Unsolved Mysteries and now, NBC Wednesday. Tomorrow morning on Today, a look at how Americans work. Plus Ringo Starr, Rosie Perez, and Bob Vila. So join us tomorrow and see what a difference today makes. The attacks began in August. A serial killer was targeting elderly women who lived alone in Spring Hill, Florida, an hour north of Tampa. But when authorities broke the case this weekend, Dateline was there. Tonight, an exclusive look, how the police did it, and the revelation of a missed opportunity that might have saved lives. Here's NBC's David Bloom. Spring Hill is a very quiet, laid-back place. They come to Spring Hill, Florida to escape the cold, escape the crime. I liked it because of the, uh, of the quietness. Gulf Coast retirees living the good life in their golden years. Until two months ago. I don't know what he's going to do to me. I am just scared. The murders began August 7th. 80-year-old Sophia Garrity raped, beaten to death, her house torched by a killer covering his tracks. Nice little old lady, never hurt anybody. Uh, this is the bedroom area uh, where the body was found. Ten days later, Bill and Alice Whitney barely survived a similar attack that also ended with arson. Police later speculated the killer thought the 83-year-old woman lived alone. My dad was found in the, in the hallway, and there was, it was a pretty bloody, gruesome scene. Bill Whitney Jr. says his 84-year-old father suffered brain damage, slipping in and out of a coma. They had a life, and this gentleman took it away from them. The very next day, 70-year-old Ruth Goldsmith was found dead amidst the ruins of her charred mobile home. Two weeks later, Goldsmith's best friend, 79-year-old Lydia Riddell, met the same fate. Her body pulled from the rubble of her mobile home in the same neighborhood. 
By the time 87-year-old Alice Daw was murdered two weeks ago, the Hernando County Sheriff's Office was searching for a serial killer who had raped and beaten to death four widows in the span of six weeks. Investigators searched the gruesome crime scenes for clues to the man they were hunting. The scenes just showed absolute anger, hostility. The, the things that he did before these people died, uh, you know some of them had to suffer very much. He has uh, a distaste or, or a great hatred of uh, some woman, perhaps, or maybe women in general. Stanley Jacobson, who used to profile serial but, killers for the FBI, uh, was following that, uh, the case and saw some familiar that. patterns. So he acts out that aggression by attacking and going after, and in this case, killing women. Spring Hill was gripped by terror. I'll be 51 there. Police stepped up patrols. I am calling and checking and seeing how you're doing. Volunteer callers checked on women living alone. You're really doing a marvelous job in calming a lot of the nerves of the elderly people. Widow Ida Bilefus was too afraid to sleep in her own bedroom. Uh, I feel that if you got into my bedroom, I'd, uh, I'd be, uh, I couldn't run anywhere. Where here, I can run here, here. They're buying this 38 snub nose, two inch revolver. And at some gun shops, sales doubled. It's nice little old ladies, you know, that you wouldn't expect with it, you know, to own a firearm in their, in their house. Now I can protect myself. It's ugly, but it's something that I had to do. Meanwhile, police began closing in on the suspected serial killer. First, investigators found a fingerprint at the last murder scene. Then came an even bigger break. We got a tip. We got an anonymous call. The call named a suspect for us. Investigators wanted to keep the suspect under round-the-clock surveillance without tipping him off. So they placed a homing device on his car and set up hidden cameras inside fake electrical transformers to keep homes the suspect frequented under surveillance. The fear that he might slip away and kill again. When you say intense surveillance, I mean, what? tell me about it. I mean, 24 hours a day, absolutely, you can't lose him. You got to stay on him all the time. You know if you lose him, you've had it and someone else may die. And Anxious residents had no way of knowing the stalker himself was being stalked by police. The fear was most pervasive in neighborhoods where the killer had already struck. Ruth Kisselback lived next door to one victim across the street from another. It was just hard, you know, you wondered if, even though I'm young, I was there by myself, whether or not, me, you know, it could happen to you or something. And you had a gun, is that right? I had a gun and I had my dog that was there with me and, had my brother there to protect me. The irony was that her brother was no protector. Three days ago, Kisselback's brother was arrested. And within minutes, police say, Edwin Michael Capert III, a 29-year-old former Little League baseball coach, had confessed to the killings. How could somebody that did this call me every night to make sure that I was all right? A serial killer task force headed by Major G.Z. Smith wondered the same thing. We had to find something, some way of linking our suspect with every one of these victims. And there had to be a common denominator there someplace. And we knew there was. We, we knew we had the right guy. We just had to be able to put him in all our crime scenes. And it ended up being his father. Capert's father, Skip, is a disabled seaman who's worked as a handyman for neighbors. Michael Capert would help his dad with odd jobs. Police say that's how the alleged serial killer met his victims. Investigators trailed the younger Capert for six days with an arrest warrant that was only good in Hernando County. Friday nights, when a surveillance camera spotted Capert in the county at his parents' home, police swooped in, and their suspects started talking about his urges. At several points during the interview, he said that sometimes it would just come on him to go do it and there was a need, and he had to fulfill that need. In a phone call from the jail, Capra told his parents, there's a dark side to me, and spoke of reliving the murders. He said that he's getting flashbacks of what happened. And as he gets these flashbacks, he just wishes he was dead, or someone would kill him. And I spoke to him. 
Or we can tell them. And I them. told them, even though you did all this, just, you know, if you, whatever's going on, you're still our son. We love you, but there's nothing we can do for you. Michael Caprit grew up in New Jersey. His parents say he dropped out of an elite Catholic high school. They blame his problems in part on drug use, marijuana, cocaine, LSD. And this one here is probably my favorite picture. He's smiling so nice. His smile has reached his eyes. This is the Michael that we know. We don't know the Michael that's there now. Investigators paint a different picture of a man whose killing spree might have begun not months ago, but years ago. It was two years ago, February 21st, 1991. A Tampa man is badly beaten. His body found in this mangrove thicket off a major highway. The number one suspect, Michael Caprit. In 91, we were convinced he did it. In 93, we were convinced he did it. The problem is that the state attorney at that time didn't feel that a jury might be convinced. Two hours after the 1991 murder, Caprit was caught on videotape buying gas with the dead man's credit card. But Caprit told police he'd found the wallet, and prosecutors decided not to indict him. They didn't think they had a case, so they let him go. Not so, says former Tampa prosecutor Bill James. Today, I would make exactly the same decision as apparently we made back in February of 91. Because there's there simply would be just insufficient evidence to successfully prosecute the case. This time, authorities say they'll likely seek the death penalty against Michael Capritz. Capritz's lawyer says his client will plead not guilty, suggesting his confession might have been coerced. But investigators believe they have the physical evidence to convict the accused serial killer. What they cannot do is turn back the clock and make the residents of Spring Hill, Florida, feel safe again. With the crime the way it is, not only in this state, but all over the country, I just have a feeling it will happen again. Howard Stern, is he outrageous? I think my mother wants to get it on with me. Or obnoxious? I said, I hate you. Sometimes his own family isn't sure. Do you think that his uh, radio show is appropriate for kids generally? Plus, a fine romance. Dateline's Picture of the Week. Hi, this has to be in L.A. tomorrow. No problem, sir. With express mail from the Postal Service, you're never left in the dark. Yes, your package is in L.A. and will be delivered. Morning. From just $9.95, we track, we trace, we deliver for you. You've got a bad cough, but you've also got a sore throat and a stuffy nose. Put yourself in one place where the vapor action formula of Hall's Mentholiptus means real medicine. To feel better fast. Three symptoms, one place. The Halls of Medicine. People around Flat Rock, Michigan feel more secure driving the Mazda 626. They make them themselves, so they put dual airbags in every one of theirs. And every one of yours, too. They say Mozart composed from midnight to 7 a.m. Hemingway was at his best before noon. Edison, inspired by the dark. At Compaq, we understand that ideas aren't governed by a clock. That's why we're standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to answer your computing questions. Galileo, definitely a night person. The 24-hour helpline from Compaq. Thursday, a woman struggles with a dread illness. Obsessive compulsive. Obsessive compulsive shopping disorder. You're kidding. Really? Really. An all new LA Law Thursday. Now for the Dateline timeline. All the events happened during this, the second week of October. Do you know what the year was? Dr. Milton Friedman won the Nobel Prize in Economics. Elizabeth Taylor announced her engagement to John Warner. Tom Brokaw broke in The Rookie on NBC's Today. And there is a new and now permanent addition to this setting. Thank you. The top movie at the box office was Logan's Run. Maude led the TV Nielsen's. I'll rip his heart out! 
And the number one single was a fifth of Beethoven by the Walter Murphy Band. All right, what year was it? 1975? 1976?